I want to return to you the piece I don't have, so I have to go run for it in just a couple of minutes. Uh, I want to work with you on the issue of research, and I want to finish the specific purpose, or this, yeah, your specific purpose statement, and I want to um, finish up on that analysis, the, the analysis of situational uh, adaptation. So that's a lot of stuff to do. Uh, next time, we're going to have uh, our last session of preparation for the speech. We will not meet on Tuesday of next week. I will be in here on Tuesday of next week to help anybody who feels that they, they need that practice time. So you can come in with part of your speech or all of your speech. Uh, and I'll be in this classroom. You can come up front, try it out. We'll video it. You can take a look at what you're doing. We'll give you some things to, to do to help you work on your anxiety. So next week will be like individual sort of a conference, but you don't have to sign up. You can come in as you wish. Today, as I said, we want to do a couple of things on purpose, topic, research, uh, complete our specific purpose, and complete our analysis. So you've done some stuff with analysis. Uh, right? I gave you that paper. We did all that demographic analysis. You got all kinds of information about the, the populace. Now, I want you to work on situational analysis. You have to adapt to the situation. So what is the situation here? What are the criteria, what are the things that you know about this place that have to do with situation? Okay. You have a constantly running fan. What else? What else have we noted about this space? Which way does which way does it work to talk? Can I hear you well? No. I have trouble hearing you. Not because I'm deaf, but because this is just not this is a room that is not built acoustically for two-way communication. This is built for one-way communication. Fan up front. Trouble hearing feedback. What else? What else about the situation? Michael? Too big for a small class. Too big for a small class. Too small for a big class, right? You're right in the middle. You're right at the edge of large group. What does that mean? So far, we've identified three situational factors. Size of the group, the noise of the fan, the one-way communication. What are other factors that you have to take into account? We'll have the electronics work if you want to use a PowerPoint. Okay. That. How does the electronic work if you want to use a PowerPoint? Does it work well? Yeah. It's starting to have some color problems. I'm not sure why, but this, this brand of projector has that problem on a regular basis. It, as, it, as it ages, the colors get really faded out and way off what they should be, and there's no way to adjust them that I want. What else? got to know about the electronics. If you want to use a want to use that speaker, you got to know that that speaker gives really strange popping feedback at various times. What else? What else about is this situational? What is Ben doing? What is Ashley doing right now? Why? Why are they hungry? They didn't eat breakfast. What time is this class given? 9:10. <laughs> Nine ten, and that means what? Some people are going to be eating. Some people may still be sleeping. Okay. 
We have Emily. We have Jenny. You look at Jenny. She's taking allergy medicines. Her eyes are red and puffy. She's not yet slobbering, but she may at any minute. You look at Emily. Emily is suffering from a nasty cold that is just hanging on and hanging on and hanging on. She's got runny nose. She has she doesn't have puffy red eyes today. She's got a runny nose sometimes. Sometimes has a cough. Steph has been suffering a bunch. Ashley's been suffering a bunch. You've got people who are coming in how? Sick. Sick. And they may be taking what? They, we may have some people on drugs in this class. Okay? That's another situational analysis. You may have people who are sleepy. You may have people who are eating. You may have people who are on drugs. Okay? All of those are situational analyses. What about outside? Mary? People talking and walking. Particularly when? Beginning and the end. So if you're a speaker at the beginning and the end, you have to remember there are people outside. So what are some things now that you have to do? Well, they're going to vary with the person, but there are a couple of things that will be general. What are they? What must I do with that? We've identified a number of situational factors. What must I do? You need to adjust your voice. To okay. In general, everybody everybody in general must be louder than you think you have to be. Some of you, Greg, Mary, Jeff, go to 11. Just turn it to 11. <laughs> right? And I don't care, Stephanie too, I don't care if you could make 10 louder. Go to 11. Right? Spinal tap. Spinal tap. Favorite. It goes to 11. So be louder. Most of you can go to 11, but particularly... Ashley does not have to be louder. Ashley is a singer who projects. <laughs> ben probably doesn't have to be louder. Ben is a singer who projects. Jenny, on the other hand, is a piano player, so she's used to not being heard. When she's playing with the jazz band, you know, I, it's it's really neat when you walk in and and the jazz band is really you know doing a lick and it's great and it's going great. And there's Jenny just pounding away at the piano, and you don't hear the piano. It's like, what happened? She could just not be doing anything, and nobody would know. In fact, maybe she is. All right, be louder. What else do you have to do? What else do you have to do? What happens if you close the door? What happens to the to the air in this room when you close the door? Yes. Stuffy air. What happens to people in stuffy air? Yeah. All right. So they start to get sleepy. How do you adapt to sleepy people? You know, here's Michael. Here's Michael. Louder is one way. What else can you do to help sleepy people? Engage the audience. Engage the audience. <laughs> Engage the audience. What do you mean, Ashley? Ask questions. Ask questions. You are you going to interact the way I interact in class? Probably not. Probably not. But as, not as informally. Like I mean, not. Right. Right. So you may ask what kind of questions? Use the rhetorical question. Use the rhetorical question. You, don't be afraid of the rhetorical question. Don't overuse it. 
Don't make every other statement a rhetorical question. Rhetorical questions are ones that you already know the answer and so does the audience. Is this going to be a winning season? Of course it is. Of course it is. In life. I'm not talking about a sport. I'm talking about life. Are you going to win in your life? Absolutely you're going to win in your life. There is no losing in your life. There's only winning. Dying is winning. Dying is winning. You will die. And you will win. Okay. So those kinds of things are important. What else is important to get an audience attention? What did I just do? I speak up and what? Point at them. Point at them. Don't be afraid of gesture. <coughs> be louder. Relax. Close the door. Engage the audience. What else? What else? Ooh. Watch your proxemics, right? One of my favorite pastors, who was my pastor for three years, uh, Tim Curry, not the actor, but pastor down, down in, at Emmanuel Church in Hutchinson, Kansas, went in the period when I was a member of that church, he went from always preaching from the pulpit to coming and preaching in the aisle. Now, Tim is a big person. Tim is Mike size plus. That's supposed to mean. You're a, you're a big, strong person, okay? But Tim had the problem that he liked to be close to people, right? And he would come up and preach this close to people. And you felt intimidated. you got to give people their space. So don't get too close. Know where you can go. Take over the space. Take over the space. In other words, if I put all my stuff on the desk and you come in and you want the desk nice and clean, ask me first, please. But certainly feel free once you've asked if you say, can I clean that all up? Yeah, go right ahead. To move my stuff out of the way. If you don't like where the, where the podium is, this little desk. Move it. You want to be over here. I don't care. <laughs> you take over the space. Why don't you put it over here? You have a PowerPoint. You have a PowerPoint. Or you have an object. Right? Not if you don't want to. This is your space. You're in charge. Your adaptation to the situation means that you take over the space. Be bold. Be resolute. Take it out. So what do we got? We've got be louder, relax, close the door, engage the audience, 
vary your inflection, close the physical distance, but watch your proxemics, take over the space. Anything else you need to do in general, everybody needs to do. Maybe you don't. Be confident. Remember that you start speaking before you get up here. You start speaking the minute you come in the classroom. Build that confidence in yourself. Wear confident clothes. Wear comfortable shoes. Don't wear flip-flops. Flip-flops are not comfortable shoes. They, they may feel comfortable. <laughs> yeah, I know. You don't no, own anything with no, flip-flops. No, we talked no. about that. Can we be barefoot again? Yeah, you can be barefoot, that's fine. <laughs> barefoot is better than flip-flops, because flip-flops have the tendency of people to do one of these, and they'll flap them around. And I don't know if you saw it or not, uh, the uh, Nebraska, uh, it was a Nebraska uh, hitter, Spike, you know, frontline woman in volleyball, she's 6'5", uh, and she received the Woman Athlete of the Year Award from the NCAA. And she's giving her speech. It was a powerful and moving speech. Uh, and as most really fine athletes, she was quite humble about her achievements. Um, and I think genuinely so. But she was giving this powerful speech, and they were shooting, videoing from the side, and she was doing one of these. During the whole speech, right? She's got one foot flat, and the other one is doing this. And she's holding on for dear life. Are you talking about Jane Buster? I think that's who it is. No, no, it's, it's a female. She's from the, she's a Nebraska volleyball player. Yeah. Um, but she's standing there this whole time. She's undercutting her, her confidence by letting her feet be uncontrolled and not being able to let go of the podium. I understand this part. And I, I understand why this happens. But believe me, you are much better if you were to stand Control your body, control the space. That's situational analysis. Everybody has to do slightly different things for situational analysis. What I'd like you to do, Greg, if you would stop the camera.